الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين taking carrying on from where we left off in Surah Al Imran we began with the mentioning of the stories of the prophets and Allah begins mentioning of Zakaria and Maryam and after Maryam had her miraculous child Isa alayhi salam he had the miracle of speaking in the grave wa yukallimun nas fil mahdi wa kahla in the cradle thank you he was speaking in the cradle and on the same page Allah mentions the miracles that he gave to him of you know creating a bird from clay and then breathing into it life uh, curing the leper bringing the deceased back to life but all of them has bi'ithnillah connected to every single one of those miracles also he was given a book which confirmed the Torah that came before him <coughs> and his main call was to say inna Allah rabbi wa rabbukum fa'budu hadha sirat mustaqim my lord and your lord is Allah so worship him and when he feared that uh, punishment was close from those people who disbelieved he asked his disciples, قَالَ الْهَوَارِيُّونَ نَحْنُ أَنْصَارَ اللَّهِ So he asked for help from his disciples. In this one and a half pages, it is quite clear that Isa alayhi salam is not the son of God, let alone being God himself. He spoke in the grave from the very beginning and he said, وَمِنَ الصَّالِهِينَ And he said that I am from the pious uh, servants of God. And uh, or that he will be from the pious servants of God, and that he is a messenger sent to Bani Israel, and that he had these miracles with the permission of Allah. And when he feared death, how can God die? How can he let his son die? How can his son need helpers if his father is God, Jalla higher above? He is from such an example. And the next page, Allah said that Isa was raised to him. And he was purified to him. And that he will have the highest station above those people who disbelieved with him in your, on your al Qiyamah. So this clearly shows, and his message, and it carries on, his message is to believe in Allah and to do righteous deeds. So this clearly shows that Isa salam, was not the son of God. And all of this refutes it from the very uh, onset of his birth. So this miracle was as if it was given with the hikmah, with the knowledge of Allah, that these people are going to say these things. So the very first statement that he said, that I am the servant of Allah, clearly shows that Allah Jalla wa'ala knows what's going to happen in the future. And Allah's uh, wisdom is quite clear in this. And Allah makes the parable, إِنَّ مَثَلَ إِيسَ إِنْدَ اللَّهِ كَمَثَلِ Adam, And Adam was described in Surah Baqarah. And both Ahl Kitab, I agreed that Adam is not the son of God. Yes, God created him, Allah created him with his own two hands and he gave him all of these uh, virtues. So if we are going to say Isa is the son of Allah because of the miraculous birth or because of whatever they're trying to make gulu of or excessiveness in, then Adam has the same similitude that he was created without even one parent. So from the very onset from Surah Baqarah, their ideas are falsified or nullified. And then Allah Jalla wa'ala goes on to talk about Ibrahim alayhi salam. Allah says, Ya Ahl al-Kitab, lima tuhajjuna fi Ibrahim, wa ma unzilat al-Tawrat wal injil illa min ba'dih. How can you say that Ibrahim was a Jew or a Christian when the book was revealed, or those books were revealed after him? ما كان إبراهيم يهودي ولا نصراني ولكن كان هنيف المسلم إبراهيم was a person of Tawheed and his religion was a religion of Tawheed does it make sense that Allah has given a messenger prophethood and he's given him books and then he tells him to make shirk that doesn't make sense at all and that is not in conformance with what all of the messengers came with and this is what these, these few passages here are saying that all of the messengers came with the idea that Allah, or with the belief that Allah is one, and all of them are going to support one another in this. 
And those people who disbelieve in this will always try, out of their envy, to distort the truth. And then Allah Jalla explains why they try to distort the truth. And this goes back to what was said in Surah Baqarah out of the level of cultism and uh, the cultish behavior and the partisanship that they had for one another. Some of them, if you give them a trust from Ahlul Kitab, they will give it back to you. And some of them will not fulfill their trust with you. Why do they do this? Because they say, Laysa alayna fil ummiyina sabir that these people are Arabs or these people are from a different cult or a different party or a different party. So this clearly shows that they had this level of cultish behaviour and this is what created uh, their misguidance. Then Allah Jalla wa ala refused this doubt within them. And he said that every Nabi came with the haq. Every Nabi came with the 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 covenant of explaining the truth to people. This is why Allah Jalla wa ala tells the believers and tell Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Kul Amanna Billah, we believe in Allah, we don't believe in all these labels and all these uh, the this, this sectarianism that you are calling to. Wama unzila alayna wama unzila ala Ibrahim wa Ismail wa Ishaq wa Yaqub wa Asbat wama utiya Musa wa Isa wa Nabiyuna min Rabbihim. La nufarriku bayna ahadim minhum wa nahnu lahu muslimun. We believe in every single messenger, we believe in all of their books, and we do not differentiate between them. And this is what Allah calls Islam. Allah calls Islam the religion of all the prophets. And anyone who deviates from this, Allah will not accept it on Yom Al Qiyamah. Then Allah Jalla wa ala goes on to talk about within the context of their partisanship and the sectarianism again talking about the qibla Allah says jalla wa ala inna awwala baytun wudi'a lin nas alladhi bi bakka and this word bakka come came in the old testament and is also in the new testament and from the hikmah of Allah is that the hujja is still and the proof is still upon them that bakka is still mentioned even within their distorted texts they didn't distort this they didn't distort the fact that there was a message that he's going to come from Paran, and Paran is known as Mecca, and uh, a desert area in, in Arabia, and a city called Bakka, and he is known the Comforter. So now here, this is clearly proof that uh, they are rejecting what their own books are saying. And then Allah Jalla wa ala gives the hukam or the ruling of Hajj being obligated upon us, because this is the correct Qibla. And this is the way of Ibrahim, and he is the one who built it with his son Ismail. And Allah says in the end of the context of the ayat of Hajj, وَمَنْ كَفَرَ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌّ عَنِ الْعَالَمِينَ And those people who are مَغْضُوبَ عَلَيْهِمْ And those people who are ضَالِّين Allah is not in need of them if they are not going to perform the Hajj. And realize even more so the Tawheed. And even realize more so the oneness of the messages of, message of all the Prophets, especially Ibrahim. <laughs> then Allah Jalla wa ala gives us warning. He directs it to us now. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu. Talking to us now. Before he was talking to Ya Ahlul Kitab. Now he's talking to those who believe. In tuti'u fariqu min alladheena utul kitab yurudduqum ba'da imanikum kafirin. If you behave like them, then you will end up being kuffar. You will end up being misguided. And you will end up being dhalin. And Allah Jalla wa ala gives us ways of how we can remain upon the correct path. Allah says, number one, to be united upon the truth. To know what the haq is and to be united upon it. Then Allah Jalla wa ala tells us to enjoin good and forbid evil, to be sincere with one another and to aid one another, to help one another. This is what makes us the best nation that's ever walked this earth throughout all the nations that Allah has created and placed on earth we are the best nation and the best nation that will stand in front of the whole of creation and that's what Allah says Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas you are the best nation that Allah has ever created ta'muruna bil ma'ruf wa tanhawna anil munkar wa tu'minuna billah so Allah is teaching us how we can remove ourselves from these labels of maghdub alayhim and dalin how we can be saved from sectarianism and cultish behavior 
is if we believe in Allah and we enjoy good and we forbid evil and we remain united one with one another. Then Allah Jalla wa ala moves on to give us context that if we have this, then it's not going to be free of problems. We are going to be tested. But throughout these tests, if we remain firm, Allah will aid us. And the promise will never be conflicted. Allah said that He will support us. وَلَقَدْ نَصَرَكُمُ اللَّهُ بِبَدْرٍ Allah saved you or supported you in Badr. وَأَنْتُمْ أَذِلَّ And you are only a small number of people. فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ Fear Allah so that you can give shukr to Allah. Fear Allah by doing what is right and staying away from what is evil and staying away from the cultish behavior of those who are magdub alayhim and those people who are dalleen so that you can give shukr to Allah. إِذْ تَقُولِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ أَنْ لَنْ يَكْفِيَكُمْ أَنْ يُمِدُّكُمْ رَبُّكُمْ بِثَلَاثَةِ آلَافٍ مِنُ الْمَلَائِكَ مُنْزِلِينَ بَلَى Is it not enough that Allah sent 3,000 angels to you in support? Allah said, even more so, if you remain firm, if you remain patient, if you remain upon taqwa, Allah will even make it even more easier. And Allah will say, Allah said, He will send upon you, هَذَا يُمِدُّكُمْ رَبُّكُمْ بِخَمْسَةِ آلَافِ مِنَ الْمَلَائِكَ مُسَوِّمِينَ That He will send 5,000 angels to you in rows, one after the other. So Allah is saying here that you have to remain firm, but it's going to be a very, very hard test. Allah then Jalla wa ala goes on to talk about some of the ahkam, just like they have ahkam in Surah Al-Baqarah, some of the rulings that led to the message being distorted and people become deviated. And one of the biggest ones here, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا تَأْكُلُوا الرِّبَاءَ أَضْعَافًا مُضَاءَفًا وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ All you who believe, do not assert interest. And here in this ayah of Surah Baqarah, and like we said before at the beginning, Imam Suyuti in his book here, has said that each ayah or each surah comes with a general statement which is then later explained in the next surah in more detail. So in Surah Baqarah we have a warning against uh, interest, we have a punishment that has been set about interest, but it hasn't clearly explained what interest is. However, in Surah Al-Imran, which is the next surah, it has explained to us what interest is. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O you who believe, la ta'kulu riba don't eat riba adha'afan mudha'afa. So it explains that if I give somebody some money and I expect more money back, to have a multitude. So again, Allah is establishing that we need to follow taqwa and we need to follow the correct way. And Allah is saying in the next ayah, Hasten with one another and race with one another for the mercy of Allah and seek His Jannah. How do we seek Jannah? And we saw this all mentioned in Surah Baqarah, but here we have more detail again. Those people who spend in times of ease and those people who spend in times of difficulty. Those people who pardon and repel their anger. Those people who pardon and repel their anger and those people who hasten to do good deeds. These are the people or those who Allah has guided to the correct path. وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاهِشَةً And if you slip or you oppress someone, ذكر الله فاستغفروا لذنوبهم. They remember Allah and they seek to rectify their affairs and they go back to making istighfar to Allah. And then Allah ends the context of uh, enticing the believers or encouraging the believers to do good deeds. قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ سُنَنٌ فَسِيرُ فِي الْأَرْضِ فَانْذُرْ كَيْفَ كَانَ آكِبَةُ الْمُكَذِّبِينَ Look at what happened to those people before you and then Think about your actions and think about your status and think about where you are. Because those people before you either were destroyed and the people of the book were either had their message distorted by themselves or they became ignorant of their message and their book. Then Allah Jalla wa ala gives a perfect example of what happened at the Battle of Uhud. The Battle of Uhud was a test for the believers. They were faced with an outside enemy. And an inside enemy, also the munafiqeen, were telling the believers not to go forward because that would leave their houses in Medina exposed. So let's go back and leave the Prophet ﷺ and his companions at Uhud. This will be better for you. 
this is such a big fitna that even some of the companions were drawn into this fitna. And the reason why this is relevant to us here is because Allah is explaining that those people who got engaged in this labeling and this cultish behavior and the doubts and the distortion of the messages, this is how they became misguided. So Allah says, In yamsaskum qarhum faqad masru qawmu qarhum mithlu. That if you are affected, i.e. the Prophet ﷺ, then those munafiqeen are also affected. And then Allah said that it's going to be a test. You have been sent and it is a test. And this battle itself was a huge test to the extent that there was a scream saying out that Muhammad ﷺ had been killed at Uhud. And now there was a huge state of confusion. The companions did not know what to do. Allah says, مُمَا Muhammad illa Rasul قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُلِ He is a messenger, just like the messengers that came before you. أَفَإِنْ مَاتْ أَوْ قُتِلْ أَنْ قَلَبْتُمْ عَلَىٰ أَقْقَابِكُمْ If he is to pass away, are you going to turn on your backs and leave Islam? Are you going to distort your message? Are you going to become ignorant to what he came with? This is not the state of Islam, not the state of the believers. And this is why Allah Jalla wa ala then goes on to mention that every single Nabi had those people supporting them, those people who were firm in supporting them. Then Allah Jalla wa ala then Allah Jalla wa ala goes on to move on to talk about the story of uh, or the battle of Uhud in detail. And he mentions that all of the Anbiya and the Rusul had people supporting them. And all of the Anbiya and the Rusul are supporters of one another. They came with the same message. And they had been given a covenant to support one another. And those people who have passed away and were subject to some of the afflictions that happened at Uhud, then they are in the best station because they died upon success. فَرِهِينَ بِمَا أَتَاهُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ وَيَسْتَبْشِرُونَ بِالَّذِينَ لَمْ لَمْ يَلْحَقُوا بِهِمْ مِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ أَلَّا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ They are in a state of bliss. They are in a state of martyrdom. They are in a state where Allah is continuing to provide for them. Now here is a point that we need to remember. That Allah is telling us to have taqwa and to have sabr and to stick to the message of the Prophet ﷺ. And what, what we learn from here is that in Uhud there was such a level of confusion. And just one mistake led to Hamza, the uncle of the Prophet ﷺ, the person who supported the Prophet ﷺ from the outset as soon as he became Muslim, and 70 other noble companions to pass away just because of one sin, just because of confusion, just because of a distorted message, just because some people were ignorant and were taken in by the doubts and the, and the, and the confusion. So how about us who have come such a lengthy period after them when there are many distortions, there are many confusions, and there are many things that are leading us to leave the taqwa and the sabr that Allah is telling us to hold on to here. Then Allah Jalla wa ala goes on to mention, again, a financial uh, oppression which this surah is ending with. Just like Surah Baqarah ended with financial oppression and financial rights, riba and, and uh, debts and loans, Surah Al-Imran is also ending in the same way, but it's mentioning how those people, Maghdub alayhim, mocked the believers and mocked Allah. Allah in Surah Baqarah tells the believers to give a goodly loan, to spend in sadaqah, so that they can aid the religion. But those people who were misguided used to become stingy with their wealth and did not want to support the religion and they preferred the life of this dunya. That this is evil for them, their stinginess. And Allah will punish them on the day of judgment because of their, pun- because of their stinginess. Then Allah Jalla wa ala goes on to talk about another doubt that they brought, which was a financial doubt. لَقَدْ سَمِئَ اللَّهُ قَوْلَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ فَقِيرٌ وَنَحْنُ أَغْنِيَاءٌ there were a group of people who said that Allah is poor and we are rich. Allah is asking us for a loan to support his religion. If Allah was rich, he would support his own religion. Allah said, سَنَكْتُبُ ma qalu." And these are the same people who oppressed one another through riba. The same people who used to oppress one another with financial oppression. 
the same people who used to withhold from giving in charity and supporting the religion. So Allah is saying here that we are going to write down what you... We have written down what you're going to say. We are going to question you. But you're talking about wealth. But why did you kill the Anbiya when they came to you with Haqq? This is even worse of a, of, of, a, of a tyranny and a sin. You're saying this about Allah, but then you killed the Anbiya when they came to you with the Haqq. And that you affirm that you will support the Haqq with any messenger that comes afterwards, but then if you didn't agree with him, you ended up killing them. So then, how can this be justice from yourselves? Then Allah Jalla wa ala again talking about resurrection. Like we said before, Surah Baqarah was entirely about resurrection. And Surah al also carries on with that message. Kullu nafsin dha'ikatul mawt. Every single one of us, every single one from the right party, from those who are maghdub, and those people who are led astray because of their ignorance, every single one of them are going to be standing in front of Allah, and every single one of them is going to taste death. death. فَمَنْ زُخْزِهَا عَنِ النَّارِ الْجَنَّةِ فَقَدْ فَاسْ Those people who are averted from the punishment of the hellfire and enter Jannah, those are the people who have used the life of this dunya in the correct manner. But those people who are not using the dunya to avert themselves from the hellfire, they have led themselves into dece- to being deceived by the dunya. Allah then Jalla wa Allah goes on to say that you are going to hear many different statements from those people from Ahlul Kitab, those who came before you, and even the mushriks that will harm you a lot. And we see this even till today. In fact, probably maybe even more so with the fact of social media and, and propaganda that's being spread against Islam. Well, Allah gives us the cure. وَإِن تَصْبِرُوا وَتَتَّقُوا فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ مِنْ أَزْمِنْ أُمُورِ If you are patient and you have taqwa, then you will find steadfastness. You will find relief in the pain that you are finding. Then, Allah Jalla wa Ala ends Surah Al-Imran in the same way that he ended Surah Baqarah. وَلِلَّهِ مُلْكُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ That the dominion begins to, belongs to Allah and Allah is able to do all things. Allah is asking us to contemplate on the heavens, on the earth, and the day, and the night. All of these are ayats for those people who want to be guided, those people who want to be upon steadfastness. They think about the creation, and they think about their Lord, and they think about their end, the resurrection. And they say, You have not created this out of jest, you have not taken this as a joke, this is not a a practice run. This is not something that you have done because you had some spare time. Subhanak, you are far above and uh, exalted ab- above this faqina adham adna. We have believed. So free us from the hellfire. Rabbana, inna kaman tudkhirin nar faqad akhzayta. O our Lord, we affirm the resurrection. And those people who you put in the hellfire, they are the most despicable of people. Uman lidhani mina min ansar. They will not have any kind of support in the hereafter. In the hereafter, Rabbana, inna sami'na munadi yunadi in iman. O our Lord, we have heard of a person who has come, and he is the seal of the prophets, and he is calling to iman. And aminu bi Rabbi kum fa amanna. He has asked us to believe, so we have believed. Rabbana fagfirna dhurubana wa kafir anna sayyatina. O Allah, we have believed, so forgive us of our mistakes. Give us steadfastness. Give us what you have promised us in the Akhirah and do not make us of those who are disgraced when we meet you. So Allah says that this Ummah will have that dua accepted for them. فَاسْتَجَابَ لَهُمْ رَبُّهُمْ That Allah has responded to their call. Then Allah Jalla wa ala continues to mention that this is the correct way and there are those people who sold the, the life of the, the akhirah for the dunya by distorting their message, by distorting the message and wanting ignorance. Hada wallahu a'lam wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.